You know, when you first find out about manifestation, it's really exciting. It's the prospect of being able to create anything that you desire without any limitations. But that excitement tends to fade pretty quickly. What tends to happen is that you have some initial successes, you apply the techniques that you learn, and you see some results, and it really motivates you to keep going. But over time, what tends to happen is that things either stop working or the bigger desires that you have, the things that would actually change your life at a more profound level, they are not coming in or they are not manifesting as you would like them to. And over time, that makes you feel frustrated or even diminishes your self-worth. So despite manifestation actually being this beautiful tool of empowerment, it turns into something that causes you more anxiety than you had before. Let's talk about why and what you can do differently. Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Lorena, I'm a somatic self-concept and manifestation coach and I support women to change their self-concept, to embody a new state of being successfully and sustainably so that you can manifest anything that you desire in your life. We're essentially bridging the gap between who you currently are or see yourself as and who you desire to be or become. If you like this type of content and you want to see more, then please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already, it really supports my channel to grow and this message to reach more people. And you can also leave a like or share this video with a friend if it supports you. And I also invite you to check out the links in the description box below because there's a bunch of free resources there for you to dive into if you want support on your self-concept and manifestation journey. Either if you're at the beginning of your journey or you just want to do things differently going forward, you want success, you want sustainable, long-lasting results. And if you want to dive even deeper and you want to work with me directly, you want to be coached by me, then you can also look at my coaching program, Recreate Yourself, in the links below and you can apply for that. What I hear over and over again from clients is that when they initially learned about manifestation, they felt this way. And then when they end up coming to me, they're usually in a place where they feel a bit lost and they feel a bit stuck. And they say they feel more anxious now than they did before they knew about any of this stuff. That's not how it's supposed to feel. Manifestation should be something that shows you your potential, that shows you what's possible for you. It should show you that you are so much more than what you're currently or who you're currently perceiving yourself as or perceiving yourself to be or be capable of. But for a lot of people, and maybe you're one of them, it really impacts their mental health negatively. Firstly, there is a lot of surface level information out there. The depth is missing. Manifestation has become this woo-woo buzzword online without any real explanation of what it actually means. Just recently, I was talking to somebody and telling them what I do for work. And when I mentioned self-concept and manifestation, they automatically assumed that that would mean visualization, imagination, affirmations, or like Dr. Joe Dispenza style. And that is a very limited perception. It's not that imagination doesn't play a role, of course, it's a part of it, but in the grand scheme of things, it's actually a small percentage. Because without the foundation first, you can use your imagination and you will get blocked or you will, will get partial or vague results. Manifestation simply means the formless brought into form. And it's not just spiritual. It's not just used in a spiritual context. It just refers to something that turns into something physical and tangible and touchable when at some point it wasn't that. So it can refer to an illness manifesting due to bad diet or stuck emotions and a lot of tension in the body. It can refer to behaviors manifesting in relationships due to low self-worth. It can refer to an idea or a concept that's brought to life through a product or a service being created. Manifestation is a broad term and it goes so much deeper than what you're told and taught. 
And the more you stay on the surface level, the more you have the expectation that certain techniques are going to give you results when at the end of the day, they are not what's going to give you results. Which brings me to, you are being taught to stay in your imagination instead of having a more tangible and grounded approach. So first of all, there is some toxicity in the manifestation space. Let's just say it. Like with any industry, there's good and bad and you have to be discerning. And something that I find particularly difficult or problematic, and it's often not intentional, is the idea of living in the end or ignoring your external reality. Now I get the point of that, because obviously if you're truly embodied and living in the end result of what you desire to manifest, it has no choice but to. Those who are successful are the ones who keep believing. But when that's what you're taught, and you're not actually taught how to do that in a way that's sustainable, in a way that's emotionally integrated, it causes a lot of anxiety, anticipation, and frustration. Because guess what? You're human. You have a physical body. You have your emotions. They're going to come up the moment you try to live in the end. And denying that that's a part of it creates a disconnect to yourself. You feel like you're lying to yourself. You feel stressed. You feel like you're doing something wrong. Living in the end is not about delusion and it's not about living in some fake reality. Manifestation is not just about sitting on your and visualizing and hoping for something to happen in your life. And doing it that way just creates this immense energy of waiting and it expands the feeling of waiting and hoping and wishing that you're already coming from naturally when a desire comes to you. The third reason is that you are taking too much responsibility. So consciously manifesting a reality first requires you to take responsibility for what you've manifested before. Because if you are the one responsible, you need to take responsibility. But here's where it gets problematic. If you blame yourself for everything that's happening in your reality, you very quickly lose any sense of compassion for yourself. We live in a world where we're not taught to be compassionate with ourselves anyway. We're not taught to love ourselves. And that just amplifies a lack of self-love that's often already present. Basically, the moment you use a manifestation technique that goes against your current reality, it activates something inside of you that recognizes the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And blaming yourself can naturally then lead to you questioning your worth, wondering what you're doing wrong, thinking that everybody is capable except you. Everybody can have the life they desire, but you have to settle for some reason. If you take too much responsibility, you begin to really fight yourself and fight your reality. And the more you fight yourself, the more you create a disconnection to yourself, the more you create a disconnection to what you're experiencing and truly feeling and believing, the more anxiety and stress and frustration that will cause you. And over time, that also leads to low self-worth, which is ironic because the more worthy you feel, not just think, but actually feel in your being, the easier it will be for you to manifest both successfully and also sustainably. But because you still need to experience the shift in yourself concept, because you still need to get fully embodied in it, your self-worth tends to diminish more than it improves. It's like you're trying to fix yourself because of what you've manifested in the past or because of the reality that you have been confronted with. You think automatically that there is something wrong with you, even if that's on a subconscious level. Taking responsibility is important, but blaming yourself really doesn't serve you. If you try to fix yourself instead of heal and integrate, it just has a negative impact on your self-worth. Number four, doing techniques is burning you out. I tend to not share a lot of techniques and tools publicly. And that's not because I'm gatekeeping, but because I know without having the right guidance and support and without having an integrated holistic process that's very intentional, it's not going to serve you. Doing techniques can make you feel good for a while, which is why mostly when you initially start your manifestation journey, you see some successes through these techniques that you start applying and implementing. It's similar to when you get like a one-off coaching session with somebody. That will 
support you and that will make you feel good. But ultimately, the deeper, more integrated changes are lacking, are missing, because it's a short-term result that you're getting through that. And that's the same with techniques that you're doing. If you want long-lasting, if you want sustainable results, if you really want to break the deep core patterns that are running in the background, that are manifesting what you're experiencing over and over again, if you want the big manifestations like an epic love story or your dream home or a breakthrough in whatever area in your life, techniques aren't going to do that for you. And that's because they are temporary. And they keep you in the cycle of constantly needing to do more and more and more. And if you look at people who successfully create a life of their dreams, they're not sitting there and doing affirmations every day, unless it's really fun for them. They don't feel the need to have a particular routine. They're just out there living their life. And they're already in the state where the desires that they want and the reality that they want is so natural for them. So they don't have to try. And that's what I want for you too. I don't want you to exhaust yourself and burn yourself out doing techniques every day when that doesn't feel good to you. Basically, when you approach manifestation from the surface level point, like I said before, it triggers the exact subconscious beliefs and patterns that you're wanting to break. And they need to be really addressed and integrated. And if you don't know how to do that or you're not supported in that, the whole thing might just make you feel worse than ever before. If techniques aren't working as well for you as you think they should, it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong with the technique. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. You've just not been shown how to dive into the depths of your subconscious and reprogram your patterns at the core. You've just not had the guidance that enables you to look beneath the surface. To manifest not just successfully and briefly, but sustainably, you will need to create a massive transformation in your self-concept, in your self-identity. And that transformation does not happen through you telling yourself some affirmations or doing a little meditation every day. Number five, you have a quick fix mentality. Listen, patience is really something that you need on your journey. Now, I don't speak to this too often, although I advocate for such a sustainable approach and that's what I teach, because sometimes when I say patience is an important quality for you, you may start to think that that means you just need to wait more or you just need to hope more or wish more or you just need to be patient with what you're currently doing or that you just need to be more consistent with your affirmations or your meditations or whatever techniques it is that you're doing. But that's not what I mean, because you need to have the core foundation in your self-concept first before any technique will even support you, especially in the long run. But I'm mentioning patience because you may have a quick fix mentality, which is very common in the manifestation space, because of course you want your desires yesterday. Of course, you want it. I feel the same way. I get impatient. But a quick fix mentality really doesn't help you, especially not if you want your manifestations to last. And that's exactly what you're taught, right? You're taught, do this technique, do this meditation, listen to this affirmations track, say these things every day, do this routine every day for X amount of time, and you will have it in three weeks. And then three weeks later, nothing changes. Or maybe it's three months, or maybe it's three years. You've been visualizing every night for three weeks, you've been doing what they told you to do and it's still not here and you're in this state of waiting and then you're frustrated. Now you're frustrated because you've done what you've been told and it's not worked or it has worked and you lost it again or old patterns showed up again. Of course that creates frustration and anxiety and sadness and low self-worth. What I want to teach you is to make it sustainable. I teach you an approach that will enable you to have the foundation in your self-concept, in your identity, that will enable you to manifest with more ease, with more endurance, with more patience, with more confidence, and with better and more sustainable results. Number six, you are using the same approach for small desires that you use for big desires. You may have been told that it's all the same. Whether you manifest something small or something big, big for you, it's all based on perception, it's all the same. The process is all the same. In theory, that is true. 
it's not like your consciousness puts any labels on anything. But is it all the same? Is it the same? Whether you manifest a free cup of coffee or the most incredible relationship of your dreams that you've been yearning for for decades? Is that the same? Does that feel the same? I can tell you from experience, I have manifested a relationship with the same techniques that I would use for a free cup of coffee. And I got it, but it didn't go very well. It didn't end very well. These surface level techniques may work for small goals. The ones where you don't really have a lot of resistance to them, where you don't really care whether it happens or not. But that's not the case for the emotionally charged desires that you've been wanting for months or maybe years. And the fact that you maybe didn't manifest a free cup of coffee, that's probably not what's frustrating you. It's those bigger desires that are really frustrating you because they're not coming in or not manifesting as you would like them to. There is a huge emotional charge attached to big desires. And that emotional charge needs to be properly addressed and integrated. Number seven, you are living from your head. This is something that I see all the time and I've been there too. I've been everywhere you've been, most likely. Dysregulation is a huge problem. Now, when I speak about dysregulation, I mean dysregulation in your nervous system. And when you are dysregulated, it means that your nervous system is in a constant state of activation, of looking for a threat, of being on alert, waiting for the shoe to drop. Which, by the way, is exactly the state you're in when you're in chronic anxiety. You don't manifest just from your mind. You manifest from your entire state of being. It's even called being. And if your state of being isn't regulated, if your nervous system isn't regulated, you're going to have a lot harder of a time to get into the right state of mind too. And most people don't even realize how dysregulated they are because it's their status quo. It's their normal. And nervous system regulation is luckily getting a lot more popular, which is really nice to see. But there's very few people who actually have the skill set to personalize and individualize it in the way it needs to be. I've had multiple women join Recreate Yourself who had done so much nervous system regulation work, who had done courses on it, who had a somatic coach before. And still, when they came to me, they couldn't tell, but I could tell that they were completely dysregulated. And the only reason I could tell that as well is because I've been there. I've been in a state of such dysregulation whilst thinking that I'm calm because that was my norm, that was my status quo. So what happens when they come out of Recreate Yourself is that they leave with such an empowered, confident state of being that makes their manifestations so much smoother and their process so much more enjoyable. So if you feel anxious whilst you're manifesting, if you maybe feel even a bit more anxious practicing manifestation, conscious manifestation, then not doing it. I don't care how much you've studied about regulation. I don't care how much breath work or yoga you've been doing. You're living from your head. And eight, you're stuck in a cycle of chasing. The dark side of manifestation is that you can end up in a place where you never feel satisfied. And this is why in my process and what I teach, I emphasize self-concept work above anything else. Because the internal comes long before the external changes. Having a solid foundation in your self-concept is essential. And as I said, that's why surface level tools won't benefit you in the long run. When you are making it too much about the external and you don't actually know how to completely transform your self-concept, you will automatically, naturally, end up in a cycle of chasing. And ultimately that makes you unable to be present and fully and truly grateful and that will just continue on. Anxiety, fear and frustration, that all happens through a lack of presence. Because anxiety happens when you're in anticipation of the future. Have you gotten burnt out trying to manifest something? Because before I had this process and before I knew all this, I definitely have. Let me know in the comments. Let me know how long you've been trying to manifest something. And I'll see you again in the next video.